Did you miss me? No. Nope. Well, I know for a fact that no. there were a couple of people that didn't miss me. Yes. You know, outside of these two. Uh, no. But, um, uh, yeah. Welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, where all your Manny's dreams come true. <laughs> <laughs> Mine did. Sure. Mine well, let's did. open with that. <laughs> News, reviews, how tos, and most important, whatever <laughs> the hell else we come up with. <laughs> I'm Vince Stone. And yeah. All right. You don't want to see. I, I'm, I'm Mayo Man. That's Mayo Man. Uh, back like scoliosis. <laughs> Apparently, I'm uh, <laughs> Mayo and, and you're, Man. No, you're Mayo French Trump. boy, my loyal sidekick. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, and together with you watching us live are Mayo Minions <laughs> helping us for Mayonians. Monions? Yes, um, the Mayonians. Uh, how do we work that into Voltron, though? Um, you, you don't. You it's don't. the Mayonian Voltron. Right. Vo Co cocaine Voltron fights the Mayonians. Oh. For great justice. <laughs> for great justice. It's still a better love story than Stargate the Animated Series. which Stargate like, Infinity, man. Dude. It's real. Oh. So, what's going on in each other's life? <laughs> We're off to a great start we this are, week, man. aren't we? We nailed it. Hey, if you haven't noticed, we got a new Pedro. Hello. <laughs> uh, pardon my English. I've been speaking Portuguese for two weeks. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, on my side, uh, the uh, ThinkBot X240. Awesome little laptop. You can even play some uh, Elder Scrolls Online via Proton uh, on Linux, which is awesome at 720p low but yeah i used that while i was in portugal the whole time and awesome little laptop you can get it for pretty cheap on ebay these days very nice that's, that's terrifying man why, why would you do that it's the mayo it's gone <laughs> I mean, to his brain honestly i was a bit distracted because i'm like can mayo crouch it it can if you believe in it. Oh, always got to believe in the. Um, so, uh, <laughs> what have you been doing that's not mayonnaise related up in Canada this week? Well, unfortunately, I've just been coat coating myself in mayonnaise day in and day out, so I can't answer that question. Oh man, <laughs> it's it, it it we're getting a bit of a polar vortex up here, actually. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, it's been like minus. 15 minus 12 ish mm -hmm. in toronto for the past couple days and now apparently it got warm enough where it can snow so we're, we're getting dumped on a little bit i kind of had the reverse of that like two days ago i had the wind i mean it was 20 20 <laughs> my, my heart breaks for you dude um, i mean in portugal it was 20 the whole time so there's that it's <laughs> portugal man it's either 20 or it's yeah. on fire sometimes it's a mix of both man sometimes it's underwater I did a couple of things, man. I've up uh, retooled, reweighted, and transmogrified the search engine on the web zone because I was trying to find something on our own website and I couldn't find it. And I was like, this needs to be fixed. We need to re index and wait some, some, and now everything works. Good on that. Cool. Also, I got to uh, hang out with a uh, youth pastor in my house today. <laughs> As yeah, one if, if, this guy's that's if, an internet tech. <laughs> if you want to hear more about that, you should check out the pre pre super shows and only ooh, accessible to Patreon. Ooh, ooh, look ooh, at ooh. that. Bam. Plugs. Damn. Plugs. Oh, I should also mention right at the beginning. We're doing audio versions of the live and uncut. So you'll be able to uh put that in your podcatcher and listen to nice. the audio only. Yeah, this week's probably not a great one to start because there's a lot that was a very image heavy pre pre super shows. Just just a little bit, man. Uh there you was know a what? lot of JPEGs. Do you know what? No. Um Jordan, we had lots well, of horses in that. <laughs> It's the fun police. They're coming to arrest the horse. He's committed some horrible, horrible crime. Crimes. It's the steam litters. Not today. Yeah. Oh, Minute. We're back. Yeah, it's 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 not it's not the fun police. It's just the Android police. Show mm. link link to the stuffs in our show notes. Yeah. So apparently they they got they got themselves a bit of an exclusive. Uh, Google is working to bring Steam to Chrome OS. Yay? Question. Yay? Mark. Question mark. <laughs> I mean, so I mean the 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 first thing that might come to your brain is hey they're gonna be uh, doing something stream based because Valve has put invested a lot of. Uh, time and effort into their streaming technology, as has Google with Stadia. Um, 
but we 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 don't know because you know some some of the some of those Chromebooks, a lot of them have some weak sauce CPUs, but some of them are surprisingly decent for what they are. Okay. Um, what 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 really what really uh, what really got me thinking is like local storage is the big bottleneck here, right? Like, there's not a lot of yeah. storage on those Chromebooks. Well, why I, would I? No, and it's all EMMC. <laughs> right, like the, at, at the at most they cap out at about 128 gigs for the higher end ones. I mean, yeah. it, it could it could be a, something of a push. We might be seeing some Chromebooks that are like the gamer Chromebooks that are that have some more beefier local storage, more of like a Chrome OS hybrid cloud PC experience. But that doesn't really seem to be Google's mo. But here, here here's something I want to run by you because if mm. you if you if you put on your tinfoil, oh no, this, this is this is Google prematurely acknowledging the death of Stadia. <laughs> they can't sell games on their own service, so I, they're gonna bring Steam to their OS so that they can sell games and take a cut. Hey, shut up! It's still in beta. You don't know what you're talking about. See, internet, I did the thing you were about to do. Um, B, you can't kill something that's not alive. <laughs> How can you kill that which has, has no, life. no life? Right? Yeah, hundred percent on that. Uh, I, I'm kind of with you, man. I, I think it doesn't end well, and I say that because I saw this and it's like, okay, fair enough. To the Amazons, and I was like, how much is a Chromebook? And I tipped in, give me a Chromebook. And Amazon's like, boom, all like the first three rows were priced where you would expect a Chromebook to be in like that two, three hundred dollar range. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what I expect. And I was like, what's under the bonnet of a Chromebook in that range? And I went through a couple of them. Uh, like on average, it's like a Celeron in 3060 and about four gigajoules of RAM. Good luck with that, Pedro. Yeah, that's what mine has, and I've been the one shouting, and it's like, yes, I want to play Steam games on my Chromebook. I do. I really do. I don't know why. I, I have a problem in my brain, but that's that. Uh, the uh, I can see Google actually making a bit of an effort to create sort of a desktop variant Chrome box, even if it's like Nook sized. Uh, but with a good enough processor, it would even be an all right streaming box if you just want to stream games from your main machine to your Chromebook. Yeah. Or Google's gaming uh, PC, Stadia, right? It's still, that's still a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. As long right. as it is a thing. Uh, and um, White Wolf, thank you very much. You, you, just, uh, the... you just Mike Wazowski'd me, wasn't <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, as a Chromebook owner, I would very much like to get Steam going for the native Linux games and the Proton games. And yeah, there's a lot of people that can't really afford a gaming PC, even something like El Cheapo for 300 pounds or $300, whatever the case may be where you live. It's a very good gaming system. But if you're talking but about like a, even if it's Steam, if it's streaming, even if you can't afford that, you're going to have a crap experience unless you have, I don't know, fiber. Yes, you do need a good internet connection. Yeah, you, yes. you, you have to be Mr. Canadian Moneybags up there. <laughs> mm, making it rain. Dude, I don't know, man. And to your point, Jordan, I mean, by the time you end up with, you know, they make high-end Chromebooks with a high-end price tag. Like oh, yeah, you might as well just buy a laptop. Yeah. It's like, yeah. why are you doing that? I mean, that that's like, I, I look at the specs and it's like, oh, it, it runs Chrome OS. And it's like, yeah, it's like, that's something I would buy for somebody I didn't like. And I'm like, here, look at this. Thing. Look how thin it is. Oh, it's all aluminium. And yeah, it runs Chrome OS. Go with it. Ah, bye. Yeah, well, but but like, th that that's, that's the thing. Pedro Google looks Google at me is... and Pedro's like, I, I would be fine with that. Go ahead. So, so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Google is trying to like muscle their way into the consumer PC space. And yeah, Chromebooks are great because most people do their shit on the web anyways. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all they need is a browser. But like I I can totally see them trying to like nooch into that more traditional PC market for the people who want more local content. It, and there are would, a lot would, of people who have Chromebooks precisely because they're cheap. So having that content available even if it's not students. ideal in a platform. Yes. <laughs> even if it's student, not an ideal student, platform. Students or people or people Very who work good. in accounting. <laughs> You, 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 don't, you don't need a full computer you know unless what? you're doing some weird ass Excel shit. Man, which... playing Steam on Steam OS <laughs> too mainstream. No, you gotta you gotta play it on iOS, right? Yeah, <laughs> we're we're talking we're talking about money bags. For those of you who are like legit money bags and have i everything, Steam Link has an a, a snap on uh, on the App Store. For, yeah, you can you can gyrate that fine ass. Um, <laughs> 
There, there's a, there's actually two updates that came out in pretty rapid succession for the uh, Steam uh, iOS app. Uh, the first one uh, enables some mouse clicks when mouse buttons are bent to unscreen buttons. They also have some pinch zoom settings, uh, four finger taps, basically controller improvements. I quote controller because it's it's a touch screen. But I get, I get a very real question. I don't know about the eye ecosystem. Do we have like a separate Steam chat on Android? Yes, I think ah. I think that I think they did do that. They, okay. they did break it up because there's the, there's the Steam streaming and then there's like the Steam app that has like the two FA and the chat stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But there, you know, en en enough about this Apple nonsense. We got a new version of Proton. Yay! <laughs> Uh, four eleven dash twelve. What does it bring? It brings that new hotness we talked about last week. DXVK one five one. All up in your face, man. That's the one that has the option to change the number of threads used for pipeline compilation. So if you get one of those, boo, which is not uncommon anymore, like a twelve, eight, twelve, sixteen, man. Thanks, yeah, AMD. I, uh, I think you can get the CPU. optimizations if it is six cores. Oh, you can either way and roll around with it. What else do we have? Uh, there's a fix for the controller, Xbox controllers, Neelix. Yay. I don't know what that is. And updates to the Steamworks SDK. All good. All neat. All new. And as I explained to someone on Twitter who was parroting, I think Chris Titus Tech recently said that, you know, they're still operating on like two week old technology, uh, not technology, news. Yes, news is technology of the. Theorized DXVK hiatus, which was never, you know, it, it, which it was, was never official, and the developer was just saying that he was getting a bit tired of it. Dude, yes. was just, that's kind of what he's like. <laughs> rawr, on the internet, sometimes you got to do that, and and you know, <laughs> we were guilty of like, no, it could be on hiatus, and it clearly wasn't. Yeah, well, yeah. and uh, like the very next week or the week after that, it's like, oh yeah, DXVK, it's a part of DXVK now. Mm -hmm. Well, that, well, that was that yeah. was part of the original news post. But anyways, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Proton. Um, yeah. So the updated Open VR support makes a couple games playable, and it's nice to see that like Valve is still working on trying to get VR stuff on Linux via either native or Proton, giving people the option. Yep. And yeah, when when they say update Steamworks integration, I mean that's kind of a given. If they're going to release a new version of Steamworks, they might as well update the version of Proton to support it. Indeed. Oh, and I guess I should point out we have played the home game. I. Don't know when this um, switch got flipped, but you can play Witcher 2 now with Proton. You just have to move one configuration file, hmm. and it launches, and you can just run it on F you, that's why, mode, with like the <laughs> Uber sampling. Mm -hmm. 2060 at 1080p? Eh, it's anywhere between um, yeah. oh man, I, 67 and 100. I actually caught someone streaming Witcher 2 uh, earlier this week. It's and a great. Yeah, there, 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 is, there is a great bit in there where it's like, and now watch this, and then the character just glitches out. <laughs> I've never played Witcher Two, so yeah, that's it, it, that dude streaming that was made me think. I'm like, does that work with Proton yet? Yeah, turns out it didn't, but then it had a native port. Native. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Version Happy New Year. I mean, I mean, hey, something that <laughs> something that has. Native port. Happy Lunar New Year! For, and uh, for, for before, now. yes, uh, before the uh, actual Steam uh, Lunar New Year sale hits, you get the uh, Lunar New Year update for. That Rocket looks like cars. a Lunar Marshmallow. Oh wait, the the, the, the it's Lun them Lunar lanterns. Marshmallow. <laughs> lunar, lunar Marshmallow is my prog rock band <laughs> name. Also, can we play uh, of like a map can I play with as those the lanterns, lanterns and try to? <laughs> Yeah, that'd be fun. But no, it's uh, the new content uh, season for uh, Rocket Cars, and it's called Lucky Lanterns. And uh, the, it brings a new arena. It brings a bunch of new cosmetic stuff. So, yeah, it's the usual spiel. If you play Rocket Cars, if you've been following any kind of Rocket Cars news at this point, you know what to expect from this one. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not doing the, um, like, loot boxes anymore, so you can either buy into the season pass or <coughs> play enough to unlock everything, so... There's Spe that. Speaking of, what's what's the over under on Mr. Alert getting that rat race? I, I was about to like, go to that. I was like, <laughs> we, we got to put money down before we start seeing how many of the toppers he's collected from this. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I think I'll speak for the entire team here that uh, even though all three of us have hundreds of hours in Rocket League, it's because we play in the after shows, and I don't mind the dragon topper. That's kind of sweet. Um, the wheels are decent. The what. Outside of the aesthetics, I'm like, oh, look, it's it's a new background, which I understand that they're 
different arenas played differently, but I don't think any of us are good enough to I'm like, no, it's another hole with a ball in it. Let's play all around. I, yeah, I, uh, and uh, the arena the, the, is usually the same size. <laughs> so, some, sometimes, but then the you get like ones. the, the uh, I mean, the, the I'm actually comes out. It's the fucking circle arena. That fucks everyone mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. Fucks everyone the up. The you. <laughs> good news, everyone. Wait. Is it though? Not really. Uh, Linux yeah. version has been disabled for maintenance. Linux version of what? Vin- Hidden Colors. Yeah. Uh, I don't know a lot about this game other than they sent us some copies over um, Curator Curate Connect. Yep. But what I want, I want to give them little prompts, man, because I don't like poop poop and everything. They're like, yo, we have temporarily, all caps, disabled the Linux version of our game. They're not giving up on it. We're dip- adapting our work completely. To it, so I mean, they're going to work on it, get it hammered out ASAP. We're sad we can't offer a good experience. Look at this; something doesn't work, and they're like, "Yo, this is not up to quality." People are giving us money for this, and we're not charging mm-hmm. a discount rate for the Linux version. But let's just pull that off and let's get it 100 percent before we get out the door. Good on you, lot. Yeah, what's what's nice about this announcement? It's not like uh, the Rage Two guy was like, "Oh, Linux is inherently busted because this optimization strategy that I use for Windows doesn't work on Linux." <laughs> right? Ah. <laughs> something, something it's, Mac. Ah. Yeah, it's like no. Listen, we 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 bit off more than we can chew. We're gonna take it off the store. We're gonna fix it, and then mm-hmm. we're gonna give it give it to you guys. And you know, may, maybe maybe we'll throw some chairs out uh, at it after uh, after they get it fixed because yeah yeah that's a parties. really nice change from the usual spiel yeah the the rage 2 guy i, I, uh, I guess Gary it's Newman. Early it is cetera, early access, access, which is even better <laughs> oh my god deal with it early access lol hashtags in um mm. <laughs> as i'm playing well, yeah it's a nice on. change of pace <laughs> let's continue the um developer hugathon though Yes, because, yeah. uh, well, the game we're throwing chairs at this week, mm. stick around for the chair Spoilers. Position. Yes, uh, Danger Gazers, uh, they had a bit of a thing uh, with... Was it um, called Radar Love? Please tell me it was. We got a wave no. in the air. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> they uh, decided, you know what, our game is great and all, but we know that piracy is a thing and some people just don't want to pay for our game. And every time that a developer decides to acknowledge that and say, release the game on some torrent website, it usually turns out well for them. And it turned out very well for the developers of Danger Gazers because they straight up put it on the Pirate Bay and oh, they no, saw God. a... S- it saw a significant boost in sales. Go figure. As it turns out, people appreciate not being treated like criminals just because they're PC gamers. Uh, so That's doing a something column like this. A column B. Sometimes you can pay a little extra for that. Yeah, but uh, it goes a long you're way. Dirty, uh, dirty boy. In buying mm, some good PC. Faith. Is that your baton? Or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and you get to sell oh. more copies in return, <laughs> as was the case here, and. You know, I'm not saying that all AAA publishers should <laughs> put their games on the Pirate Bay, mostly because they're already there, mm. uh, but not they're forcing paying services. customers into draconian DRM schemes would be a pretty good start. Mm. Just saying. <laughs> Why do you hate freedom? This new Pedro is broken. <laughs> Well, I, I, I was away I, for I two mean, weeks. Give me a break. I, I mean, we, 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 we gotta, you know what? Never mind. No, no. that's a bad joke. That's uh, a bad joke. It's next. a bad joke. We got a we got next. a long way down to go. Um, long way down. It's in early access. It is a card based dungeon crawler deck builder. Um, and this one has a bit of an interesting riff because, like in Slay the Spire and whatnot, mm. usually the cards are used for um combat. Like okay. the, the combat system is entirely based around the cards in your deck. This one adds a bit of an exploration element where you can. <clears throat> oh wow, that that person on the right straight up looks like Pedro. Um, Pedro's <laughs> dead. Let let him let him rest, man. <laughs> Never. <laughs> um, we're, we're we're gonna hook him up like a flush marionette. It's great. No, uh, but you you can actually use the cards in your deck to um, build out the dungeon and connect things and make shortcuts and cut off enemies. Oh, was, so it's it's um, got a Stargate. Neat. The hands of fate. Yeah. A, a, li- a little <laughs> bit like Hand of Fate, except more emphasis on like the deck building as like cards as opposed to this just is your seed for your random level. Um, 
Yeah, uh, so I, I, li I like forcing people to have, like, a more varied deck. Like, you can't just have, like, the pure combat deck, because then you won't be able to get to the other side of the dungeon. You need to have, like, the level building stuff as well. $20, though, for an early access buy is a wee <laughs> steep. Just, just a hair. I got some I'm questions, that's... man. I'm looking at the system requirements, <laughs> and 1204+, plus or... Desktop uh, only. Yeah, plus Don't run desktop it on a laptop. only. Don't run it on a laptop. Oh, you will no. die. That's recommended desktop only. On the minimum, it's 1204 plus. I'm, I'm going to ping some folks at Canonical about their desktop only version. Of <laughs> no, you pl pl play it on a laptop at your own risk. Ooh, <laughs> danger game. I mean, uh, the, no, the actual the actual concept of this game does sound very appealing to me because I like both Hand of Fate and um, Slay the Spire. So I threw this in yeah. here because both, both of you nerds like this type of thing, and I mean, it does look a little like you know, I think. Did anything look like Darkest Dungeons before that in that genre? Or they're like, nope, this not, is not not really, no. That that was the first time no. we introduced that Mike Mignola esque Hellboy style mm -hmm. art. Right. So, I mean, but yeah, it the, looks the, the, good. And it's got it's got yeah. a Stargate with a pentagram in it. Win win. <laughs> Goat by ancients so long ago. Goat by ancients. All right. It's Let's, the Hellgate. <laughs> indeed. All right. Coming up next, we got a brand new NVIDIA driver. <clears throat> Yay. Australia is on fire, so you can give Humble some money. And Ooh. dongers. So many dongers. All the dongers. And I suppose, uh, in true LGC tradition, I'm back. And uh, we're going to be talking about drivers at the start of the news. But before we get to that, okay. I need to thank a bunch of you. Well, I need to thank uh, one person in particular this Man week. Is. But uh, before Jesus. I get to that, I'm going to let Jordan do his spiel. Spiel indeed. You should support this podcast because it's great and you enjoy it, right? Right? Yes. Right? Love it. Heading on over to, page <laughs> My to LinuxGameCast.com, mousing over that support button. No. Uh, you gotta, you gotta select maybe, maybe maybe the PayPals, maybe the Bitcoins, maybe the recurring donations, wish lists, <laughs> Patreons. Lots of lots of numerous options to support us, like a store. We got a, we got a store. We got wish lists. Uh, if you, uh, if you want to help uh, put the studios of myself then or pedro together respectively you so can pink. follow them yeah so so pink, pink my house or or maybe you want yes, to buy pedro some yoga pants my house um yeah you, you uh you can do that we also got a we got a store uh store.linuxgamecast.com you can buy all sorts of linux gamecast paraphernalia we don't have any lgc bongs yet but i'm working not on yet that. baby i'm working on it <laughs> Um, of course, the best way to support us, support this nonsense, is to become a Patreon, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. You get a What's bunch of cool stuff. What's that name again? Linux Gamecast. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's so sexy. I love the way you say it. Ooh, patreon.com slash. <laughs> Pedro's getting ready to drop something. We better hurry up and quit our shameless e-bagging. Fine. <laughs> if you join our Patreon, you get stuff like the pre-pre-super shows and where we talk about JPEGs. So many JPEGs. We do. Uh, and and crunch. We did. Oh, <laughs> we also got a new thing. Um, a couple of people asked for it, and I talked about this on Wednesday. Uh, we'll have an audio only version of the uncut episode, so you can throw that in your custom RSS feed or listen to it directly through the Patreon app. However, Sweet. you want to do it. Yeah, you can. You can also get ask, access to access ask us Ax. to our ask us ask to our us. Discord channel, uh, or or the show notes <laughs> where you can suggest stories. We can, we try to you, sweeten it up, man. You we try yeah. to dance. For her. Um, yeah, if, if, if you if you want to submit some stuff to be on the show, you can do that through our Patreon, through the mm -hmm. uh, show notes, or um, you can just sort of watch the show congeal over the course of the week until it becomes a greasy mass that you then inject into your ear holes or your eye holes if you're watching this on YouTube, <laughs> all four of you. Seems legit. Yeah. Yep. All right, Pedro, dance. So, yes, I do have to thank uh, Artherin for this um, GTX 1650. Uh, low profile Zotac gaming uh, GPU, mm -hmm. which currently is uh, sitting right here. Let me see if I can grab it. Drop something. Make it worth it. <clears throat> nope. Right here. Yes, you can drop it. <laughs> and the it fuck shatters. Out of it. Boom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it doesn't shatter, but yeah, it's. Um, it's how how will you know until in... you try? No, no. <laughs> It's already in the uh, Steambox uh, 360 V2, which is uh, very much on its way to being a fully working system. But, uh, as usual, got the thing here. Hold uh, so up again. Are there... what, what, what type of Vaseline do you have smeared on that camera? I have it's no idea. I've, I cleaned the lens, but it's still doing this stupid glow effect. 
What? what? Yeah. Do, you, do you just coat your paper in mercury? Like no, just a microfiber cloth. Uh, but made yeah. of mercury. <laughs> uh, so he says, "Hola, Pedro." Have fun with the Steambox 2.0, the horsening. So that's its mm. official name now. All the worst are Theron. Mm. P.S. Mm. Say hello to Dory. I did. <laughs> did he say Nori or Dory? Did he want you to run into a door? Like, hi, Dor- Dory. Or, 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 or buy a copy of Mori. Finding Nemo, and every time Dory comes on screen, say, like, hi, Dory. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, thank you very much for that, Arthur. And that was uh, unexpected, and you're crazy. And I love you. That is awesome. <laughs> uh, we do have Frank's fine upstanding cannibals. If you pick up anything in the studio, we will continually embarrass you, probably for up to 12 to 16 months. Because um, Frank Until likes to show space. us. Right. And then we have to get a new one. <laughs> Which, let, let's slow down on this one, because that was a pain in the ass. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love it. It was fantastic. Uh, can you? Uh, oh, oh, oh Arthur, and all hang the on. homo. All the homo are there. There we go. We have Basil, <laughs> Mike G, and Carl. You can't see it when I have like I pulled up. It's, up. No. it's kind of brilliant. It's kind of lovely. There, we're done with our e begging until next week. Ooh, dun dun dun. <laughs> Vulcan. We got to talk about. Oh. Have you talked to your children about Vulcan? No, because I don't have any children. <laughs> ah, life hack. I'm, let, let me go to the park and acquire some. Excuse me. No, we've been over why that's a bad idea on multiple occasions. <sighs> okay. 1.2 Vulcan came out and NVIDIA's like, yo, you, you get, oh, same day, boom. Here's a new beta driver for it's, uh, let's see, 440-4802 on Linux. A couple little fixes, a couple little things, bits and bobs. Nothing radical to report, but... I tested it. I'm running it right now with all the 1.2 edition. It just seems like there's, there's a gang of new stuff in 1.2 yet to be implemented, which is neat. To which I always like to say, same day. Because I remember when I got the um, 2060. The 2060 came out, and I, I thought to myself, huh, let me order that. Three days, the drivers for the 2060 were out before it showed up at my house. And so tell me again. With this, Pedro, how does NVIDIA hate Linux again? The internet tells me they do. I get confused. Yeah, no, the internet uh, says that they do. And then Mm. you have stories like that one you posted on Twitter about them basically supplying. It's like, these are the header files for the Turing cards to the Nouveau people. It's like, yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) Good good, good luck having some functional drivers in 10 years. They clearly don't want to share the sauce. And that's what takes people the wrong way no, but no, yeah no i mean these vulcan these vulcan beta drivers and having vulcan 1.2 support on day one yeah <laughs> yes Listen, please Pedro, that i i demand open source drivers because i only play open source video games if on you an open the world source records, uh, speed run on yes. super tux cart you might you might <laughs> Uh, here, 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 here's a question though, because like, okay, I would I would say Vulcan's still in its infancy. It, it's only been a few years since it's been out. Do you think there's gonna be like a Vulcan version that everyone just kind of defaults to? Like, for a while it was DirectX uh, nine, now it's DX eleven for OpenGL. Everyone's still writing shit in OpenGL two, regardless of the fact that two point one ES and three and four are out. OpenGL three point three is kind of like the go to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, in all seriousness, this does bring descriptor indexing, bus- buffer device addresses, and Spear v1.5. And prime yeah. synchronization support for the Linux kernel 5.4 new. Yeah, if, 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 you, if you got an NVIDIA yeah. laptop, so it's a good, it's good time. Prime. Get less terror. That's pretty cool. Prime. Well, let's get ready not to bundle, but to moo. Yes, because it's the, uh, well, it's one of see, the bundles I almost, that... Uh, I almost screwed up, man. I was like, what does a cow, a cat, and a cock have in common? No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But yes, it's the humble Sweet Farm bundle. And uh, there are a couple of uh, Linux titles in this one. There's uh, Niche, Evergarden, Equilinux, uh, Equilinox, I suppose, uh, Ultimate Chicken Horse, and of course, Stardew Valley. Uh, by the way, if anyone wants a uh, key for Stardew Valley, I have an extra one, so uh, hit me up. Hmm? Uh, the yeah, This bundle uh, is one of the bundles currently available 
uh, on Humble. And the other one, which I think personally is the most important one, it's the not holy shit, pay Australia what you want. is on fire. Yes, bundle. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, basically Australia is on fire. Oh God, please help us! Uh, and yes, help Australia actually fight the fires and have some money to spend on resources to fight those fires. And uh, that's what Humble are doing. It's you have to pay twenty five. Um, $25 or more to get the games, but I guess that's a fair enough cause to actually have like it a million is, and value. a couple of really good games are in there with Analytics support, yes. and th this, this is not like D-list games either. No, you, yeah, you got, no. got Armello, you got Hollow Knight, <laughs> right. regular human basketball, yep. Satellite Rain, uh, Assault Android Cactus. You, Hand of Fate 2. Yeah. The, what was it, Vo Void Bastards was the one that I think we were all kind of curious about. Yeah, because yeah. it's a first-person roguelike-ish type of thing. Apparently, it works really well with Proton, so... Did. What doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, except for Bioshock and Vine. Um... Womp womp. <laughs> yeah, that's got uh, the Windows versions got... Actually, it's got the Valve uh, DRM, and that's what's stopping Proton from letting it work. Hmm. But, you know, irony of all ironies, in regular wine, it works just fine. Nice. Hmm. So, um... <laughs> Jordan, you love talking about dongers. I love dongers. Oh my god! I mean, it's you so just great. want dongers all over your face, chest, and neck. I am a donger genuine this, donger, donger fan. I, I decorate my house with dongers. I wear clothes exclusively made out of dongers. And when it comes to nails, I nail them in with hammer dongers. Oh. Um, yeah, uh, it's available on itch. It is free to play. You can download it. It is. Um, Unfortunately, it is one of those games that is local co-op only, oh, no. which is unfortunate because you know it's it it looks okay enough. It's 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 a it's a crawler game, dungeon crawler game. Mm -hmm. Um, you could actually play it uh on with online multiplayer because you know Steam remote play doesn't give a shit if you're actually using a Steam app or not. Yeah, you just need fair. <laughs> so you you could you could get it up and running. Um, appa apparently uh. Was this the one that you need one control? You need one keyboard for, and then the rest are controllers or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's it's available on Linux. Finally, you can check it out. You can download it for free. Give, give, give it a shot if you if you got yep. if you got if you got friends unlike us who have no friends. That so I'm looking at. Us. I mean, you're basically two nights. You're running around. You're donging with your hammers. Yeah. Yes. And if you don't, it's hard a enough. bomber man with hammers. Oh, yep. hammer man. Well, bomber man already had a hammer, so <laughs> yeah, it's, it's donger man. Donger man does donger. whatever a donger can. <laughs> no, too hot for Twitch, baby. Um, <laughs> spins a dong, <laughs> hipster pixel polygons. That's the thing that I'd like you to play with at home in, in your own time. So I wanted to play around with Tomb Raider 1. No, child, not that one, the one from 1996. It's like, let me, let me see what this open tomb thing is. It's like, that's neat. I have a copy of Tomb Raider on the Steam. So I crack open that. I pop it and it's like, oh, wow. That's in like some weird ass file format to the internet. The internet told me to pound sand. And I found one post, one lone post on page two of Google in a GitHub comment. The guy's like, yo, man, this is how we do it. So it turns out in order to get gamegut.gog out, you got to make a Q file. Then you got to use Beachunk to turn it into a real ISO because game got yeah, kind of like an ISO. Not really. Then you can mount it. Then you get your data bits out. And I tried to simplify this and make it you know, one thing. If you're going to be doing a guide for something, you try to idiot proof it, you know, because I, I, for one, appreciate idiot proof guides because I can something up real quick. This I thought was simplified enough, you know, hammered down like, okay, you follow these for technically five steps you get your data files and pedro's like hold my beer let me show you how to do this uh i was just commenting at first that that uh, katana steel on the youtube comments mentions like yes if you look at the uh, dos box con file it actually tells you which file it mounts mm -hmm. as the cd drive mm -hmm. except in this case it's a um it's two files. It's the game.dat and the game.gog. Mm -hmm. So it's a Q bin, um, not an ISO. And as, uh, of course, if you are um, our patron and you 
have access to the show notes, this is what you pay the good bucks for. Uh, because you you got to see me and Ven going back and forth. And then Ven just said, it's like, yeah, at the end of the day, if you try to use bchunk on uh, the dat file as if it were a Q file, it will just spit out nine different CDRs and only one of them has the actual well, data yeah, in it. Well, I mean, if you want eight empty files for the CDR extension, your way. A lot more effective then i yeah <laughs> but that's the thing here's the thing uh, pager i didn't you know won, though you won because i was like how the hell do you mount a cdr file under i haven't done that in a minute can i change it to Low ISO? setup it's like no, no that, yeah then i got into the rabbit hole of like more challenge accepted then katana chimed back in and he's like yo <laughs> if you use cd emu then this other kernel drive to which i was like you know what use old man vin's way yeah, no, Ven's way is definitely the cleaner version here. It's just that if uh, Gog had actually gone to the trouble of removing the empty um, track entries from the Q file, mm -hmm. which is the that file, uh, then it would have sped out an ISO, but they didn't. So you get eight empty files. So that's Gah. the thing. If you want to play around with it, I suggest <laughs> using Open Laura as opposed to Open Tomb. But Open Tomb, if you just want to play around with the engine and load some stuff up, if you want to play the game, use Open Laura. You can watch me fumble around on that. I put that up on YouTube's, and I would like to point out that no Q bins were harmed during the filming of this instruction no. video. <laughs> uh, Jordan, I I saw that you were reading a Dane Cook novel. Glenn Cook. Dane Cook, got it. This is the one that changed. <laughs> for, your, for the audio listeners, he's holding up Dane Cook's Glenn autobiography. Cook. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, 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 it's about how they they faked his giant penis in America. It, it's Dots. called L O L O M G. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag MySpace. It, 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 it's called I stole a bunch of jokes. How mm. I got away with it. That's brilliant. <laughs> Redo. Well, you two can steal a bunch of ideas and uh, build them into a Doom level if you use. Um, mac os or linux uh and uh, this is redoomed uh if you remember back in the day there was a bit of a level editor that john ribeiro and john carmack released uh on next step it was uh, called doomed and yeah it, it was basically just the um a very well, I wouldn't say very easy, but an easier to use a level editor for Doom than the ones that had been available before that. And I guess at one point, a uh, rite of passage for anyone who liked Doom was actually a to make your own level. I like Doom, just not that much. But uh, Neverwinter Nights, though, I'm still waiting for Beamdog to release the uh, Linux version of that particular editor. But this one, yeah, you, it. It's the old next step version for um, current day Linux. And if you really well, hate yourself, you could fire it up and use After Step. I mean, for that, <laughs> yeah. you could, yes. Yeah, well, I, I was going to, like, what, what, what was that next step build system? But it, but anyways, I, I actually do like the idea of updating these tools to run on modern OSs. Because, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, maybe maybe get something crazy, like a Mario Maker-esque movement for Doom, now that you can, like, easily put levels together. Mm. That, that, that might be yep. kind of a fun thing, like a, Doom, you like a Doom Maker. What you're thinking of when you said those words, I was triggered and I had that flashback. The new step build environment. If you really genuinely hate yourself, get that set up. Because I remember there was that one game that like racing, like, uh, yeah, we, it, it, this was like LGC year one or some shit. Sure, like, yeah, we're talking like some yeah. plus years ago and it got open sourced. I think it, it, it was a game on Desura. Mm. It may have been. I think it, it was. Been. All right. That's not the only retro hipster pixel stuff. Yeah. We got. Uh, Libretro, you know them, you love them. They're what you use if you want, if you have a Raspberry Pi and you want to play some video games on it. Um, so they got a brand new core for you, Beastness HD, which is doing some interesting things with uh, widescreen. Is it and... truly pushing the limits of a SNES? No, because there are no SNESs involved in the making of this product. <laughs> at all. And this video is full of lies, Jordan. It, it's it's an emulator, but it, it's clickbait titles. No. That's, that's how you do. Okay. Um, but yeah, so people really hate letterboxing. You know, these games once upon a time were made when people had four by three TVs. Well, and now people jokes on you. I can adjust my big screen so it doesn't have the letterbox. La di da. I mean, the uh, circles the, are a little um, obtuse, stretch. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yes. you, you, you can stretch. I, re I remember, I remember when the Game Boy Advance came out. You could play the old Game Boy games in it, mm. and yeah, you could have it take up the entire screen. And I'm like, 
oh, I don't like letterboxing you. It's all gross now. Uh, but they added a few modes for various widescreen configurations, some of which may introduce artifacts on screen, but it does stuff to like extend the background, fix parallax scrolling, uh, to <laughs> prevent the distortion of sprites from being uh, from being stretched out when you move it from uh, four by three to sixteen by nine. Uh, like like uh, the article says, though. They probably this probably won't work with a lot of Super Nintendo games completely out of the box. There'll need to be some ROM hacks in order to address some of these things. But you know that's to be expected because again these games were designed to be run in four by three, and these are people hacking the underlying fake hardware that is running the games to run them outside their original parameters. Tiny Tunes, Tiny Tune Adventures, man. Yeah, and uh, one of the things, it's like the most popular SNES games, I can absolutely see them, like the ROMs getting hacked to allow for this until then, right up until Nintendo sues somebody. No, no, the, no they're not going to sue anybody SNES. until they release the um, HD SNES. Yeah, no, it, mm. it, 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 it's yeah, up, <laughs> the HD <laughs> SNES mini with the this, 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 titles. This is all open source, so they're, they're going to take the code, they're going to integrate it into their own shit, they're going to do all the ROM hacks in-house, and then mm -hmm. they're going to go after these guys and be like, no, you can't yep. do this. Easy peasy, <laughs> cease and the cease <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Good luck. We're not doing that for a short title. It's too long. Um, <laughs> sp speaking of easy, it's it's so easy, you guys. It's so easy. Uh, it's gaming. so easy to it's hammer on yet another one of these articles. Yay! Linux gaming made easy. The from fastest way to get up and running from CD the slide net. The slideshow. Yeah. The slide. It's not. It's not. Our, it's not an article. It's a slideshow. Okay. Fine. No, this isn't LWDW. This is uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly, and uh, yeah, it's a ZDNet article about. Uh, so step you know, one. <laughs> um, get your start. Ubuntu's. Got it. Got it. Okay. Step two. And then is... um, go to the software center. Okay. Install Steam. Those tracks. Yeah. What do I type into to get to that screen though? I think you just uh, the you just click on the things and you get to yeah you just click on the little squares down on the bottom left on the you know, Ubuntu software and you get center is the UI package the easiest way to get started but you don't tell me how to get to it David <laughs> I'm forever stuck so, here so, at a so I, I, I mean I mean that, then, that's obviously goofing but there are definitely people who'll be like you didn't tell me exactly where to click this Linux is yes. broken I can't it's literally unusable okay let's literally let's, let's just figure out if I managed to overcome this insurmountable um omission <laughs> and I made it into there the, okay it, it has a red arrow to games okay mm-hmm Mm -hmm. But can I click on it if it doesn't have a red box and arrow around it? Is that still sure. safe? Because I've seen one on my desktop. <laughs> I mean, that's like the universal highlight color, right? It's just that red box. <laughs> don't, 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 don't question it, Pedro. And, uh, okay. Hey, one says Steam installer. That's neat. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you ins I don't get a screenshot. Nope. Oh no! Oh yeah, no. They do say it's like yeah. Don't get scared uh, by the fact that there's those screenshots. Like know, really, man. pretty spooky. Really? Pretty. I'm, spooky. I'm terrified by screenshots, so it works out for me. <laughs> I'm more worried about the baby feet on my monitor. <laughs> Linux is Why small baby feet. Uh, <laughs> oh, still no screenshot, but, but it's moving. Sixty nine. Ooh, nice, nice. nice. <laughs> okay, launcher. There moves. you go. Which it's one do installed, I click? Okay, yes. here's the thing. This one's 50 50. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Launch or remove? <laughs> I like options. Um, okay. So that puts things on the desktop. Wait, there is no desktop. You're still not explaining how we get to the screen. Um, but let's pretend you did. Then I opened fucking. And, uh, what? They read into an issue. This is the point where they read into an issue, and actually the Steam window spawned with no content. So they had to kill it and start it again. Man, look at look at this Windows like behavior. It's like, well, we just mm -hmm. launched it a few more times and it started. So all good. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, to to be fair, that does work regardless of your operating system. Hey, we yeah. got we, we got the, we got Steve. We got the account. Yep. Okay, we're familiar with that. Ah, uh, we all know that two factor authentication. Mm -hmm. Yes. This this is you called should have it enabled. Go find That's your good. mobile. Yes. <laughs> yes. Get, get up. <laughs> Then we got friends. Oh, he has no friends. No. Womp, womp. <laughs> and then we're going to And play there it is. There's Steve. City Skylines. He's like, look, I have a Linux game. Followed by 
clicking on a penguin and you make the penguin blue. And mm-hmm. what does that do? It the make- f- making the penguin blue filters by Linux or uh, Proton whitelisted games only. Right. So you only see the games that are known to work. But if you don't click on the penguin, then you can try, say, Fallout 4, Washington which I am pleased to say that actually Washington. works out of the box now. So or close to anyway uh so yeah good job to valve for that this but, is yeah. a little bit of an aside do you do the um desktop no uh, things i the always shortcuts? take I those I, yeah i'm always straight out of steam like straight out of compton pause button it doesn't it does no explanation here it's just a red circle around the pause button, <laughs> it's, which, it's there's a downloading Bar there, 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 there is actually text underneath the image, but the uh, layout of this website does not make it. Give the yeah, game wait. a few minutes to download and fully install. All right, all right, all right. Fair there, right. There, there is some text accompaniment, but now you got to do a lot of scrolling. It's too much, too much scrolling. And we're in civilization, followed by Atlas wants a hug. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> and to close our slideshow, and here we are. Once the game launches, it plays exactly as you'd expect it would, or does it, Jordan? <laughs> I mean, Civ? Yeah, it does. Well, you know, I, I, I feel, I can't help but feel, maybe, maybe they omitted some things? Yes. Okay, so let, let, let's, let's back this up. Because, A, the, the, the big prime thing here is actually, so the, the, the setup of getting, you know, a game running under Linux, that's actually a pretty okay guide for what it is. Um, for, for a fairly bare bones guide, whatever. Sure, it gives you the basic instructions, but that's not the hard part. Mm. The hard part for, and it's not, it's not even a hard part, but it's, it's a hard part for people because it requires a mindset change that people are unwilling to go So through. this is more like the um, soft floppy part? Yeah, this is, this is the soft part. It is, okay. it is the half chub part. Right. It's actually getting Linux installed. It's actually downloading an ISO file, flashing it onto a USB drive, going through the installer. People might not know what a partitioner is. People are going to get freaked out by the multitude of options, and they're and things may not work right out of the box because if you have a brand spanking new AMD card, like the 2080 TI killer that is coming spoon, quote unquote, mm-hmm. uh, it's not, it's not going to work out of the box. Or if you have an NVIDIA card and you're not using a distribution like Ubuntu, Ubuntu is nice enough. Wait, hang on, say, hang on. Uh, Jordan, unfortunately, I, my 5700 XT just locked up the system. Again. I got to reboot. So I'll hold that thought and I'll, I'll finish this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, 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 so here, here, here's the thing. Getting people to set up an operating system, getting lay people to set up an operating system is a bit of a big ask. Most people don't do it. I would say like Dell and System76 have the right idea. Mm-hmm. Just provide it yep. to you as a product. Uh, I would say Dell needs to do a much fucking better job of promoting it. Stop Hell treating it like, well, oh, this is a developer machine. No, you can use Ubuntu to do whatever you want. I, I get a feeling like if I was going to be buying something from System76, I always do say that price comes with that so port yes ring ring sub girlfriend and be like yo what's up hooker and you have a real yeah. conversation rather than like uh read the manual but but before i even get started with this i put in the notes it's like i have not read the to jordan's point i have not read the slideshow <laughs> uh, you read the slideshow <laughs> but to my point is i'll get onto this in a minute after Pedro. it's like unless this starts off with learn how to use linux Step one, it, it, it's full of fail. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's another one of these articles. We've seen these time and time again. And yeah, it doesn't really address the main concern, which is to install the operating system. And that kind of got me. It's like, oh, yeah stream on Tuesday, one of these days might very well be. It's like, okay, we have a computer. Let's install Linux. Maybe that'll be the one that um, actually gets through to people. You gotta screw with people, Pedro. You gotta have like a That window. wasn't sarcasm no. at all. No, I swear. It wasn't because <laughs> here's how I wanna do it. I, I wanna have like Windows 10 open in a, I wanna have Linux open in a VM. Damn, I'd have to do like VM subption. Anyway, it results in me accidentally alt tabbing out of Linux and showing off that it's Windows underneath. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> and trying to I don't like, have a laptop with Windows. Try, trying to cover laptop, it up real quick and be like, nope, nope, and just close. <laughs> and stop the stream. No, no, you no, didn't no, see it, anything. It's a Mac. It's a Mac, it's you guys. Mac, yeah, right. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. Uh, I'm going to say step one with anything. This just applies to anything in general. Learn how to install video drivers. This one drives me up the wall, and it seems to be driving people up the wall. 
and I can only speak to NVIDIA, but knowing how to install that run file, knowing how to install CUDA is going to free you up completely. It just quit trying to click your way out of problems. It's not going to work most of the time. If you get lucky, that's fantastic. Good on you, mate. Learn to set up a build environment. Clone a Git repo. Build something from source. All these things are tools in your arsenal. Because this is Linux, you know? There will be terminal. Period. Get Far over it. it. Be. <laughs> That's not something that needs fixing. I don't think it does. Simply, mm -hmm. you know, of course, a litany of bloggers on the internet were like, this is how we fix Linux. We make it, we put more next buttons and shit because we're Windows-like <laughs> thinking. We don't want to our brain well and... It's a different operating system. It's more advanced. I'm sorry. Deal with it. You know what they're putting into Windows? Windows subsystem for Linux. Guess how that works? Command line. You can learn to use it. And PowerShell. <laughs> and Visual Studio to wrap around all that. Yeah. At the end of the day, man, once you get those basic skills in your little war chest, man, it's going to be brilliant because you're going to stop distro hopping because I see a lot of people hopping them distros, fam. Because they want that, what Jordan was describing, getting better at, I just put the thing in, it does the stuff. You're going to quit doing that. You know, you're, you're going to lose that loyalty because you're going to be looking for the distro that just gets out of the, your way the most. You're like, oh, I want the latest and greatest video driver. It's in the AUR. Not always. I usually have a fresher kernel or the latest beta drivers before they show up in the yard because I just download them and install them because I've developed that skill set, which is going to help you with so many other things. So I I don't 100% agree with that. I think I really that, do think that Linux listen, should be your man. I love you. It's okay that you're wrong. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> uh, listen, like, like, like I was saying, Linux should be your man who does both. It, if, if you want people to actually start using the damn thing, you have to start addressing some of the common usage complaints. And that means that, yeah, there should be a lot of GUI tools that help people. It should open up the door to allow people to say, okay, well, I need something more advanced. Now that I'm confident, now that I feel like I have a general understanding of how this operating system works, I can dig into the plumbing. That's what, that's how, that's how a lot of people gain their windows, quote unquote skills after dicking around in the registry, they get to a point where after installing third party app after third party app, they eventually have to crack open the command prompt, do some reg edit stuff, dig into the plumbing, but they do that after they've gained confidence. You see, in the, the system. type of people that actually go through that, they install Linux, they know what they're getting to, they prepare themselves and they do it. The type of people that uh, go, F that noise, I'm going to download another third party app. Then they're going to try to install Linux one week and you're like, Linux is stupid. I got no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, of course, <laughs> it's a mindset shift. Things will work differently. But at the same time, it's we, the entitlement it, it, and no. audacity of walking into a enterprise level operating system going, I need more shit to click on. I don't need to learn how to do this. I should be able to directly apply <laughs> you know, what you know, I've you know, already known. But here, 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 here's the thing though. If that's not easy to learn, if it's not accessible to people, they're the just internet, not going to do it at all. Period. Can, at all. Linux is so easy to use now. I mean, it is absolutely, absolutely. It is. It is. <laughs> it is better than it has ever been. You for 90% of what you're going to do as just a daily driver, you uh, just as a general user, you will not need to crack open a terminal. And I think it is a, it does, it is a failure of the product to not meet a core requirement of its user base to make at least getting to a functional state easy. That's, That's all I'm saying. Linux. Anyway, we don't have yeah, to worry that, about that, any of this desktops dead. I mean, yeah, so. <laughs> you, 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 everyone just get on your pine phones. It's the future. Pretty much. Yeah, it. PC gaming is dead. <laughs> All right, <laughs> coming up next, we're th we're throwing chairs at a game. It's it's, it's danger gazers. Danger it's dangerous. Game. Danger banana. Oh, dangerous. Oh no. Welcome to the chair acquisition. Where wow, the accused. Mu I like your shirt. Thank you. <laughs> where the survive. Where the accused must survive trial from fedora, neon, and dibwan, and then only then. Can a question be asked? Is it fun? This week we're taking a look at Danger Geezers, a game where you run around trying to shoot Jeffrey Epstein. No, it's Danger Geezers. <laughs> Too soon. Spelled by Shotek Studios, <laughs> done Game Maker. You can pick it up for about 10 bucks. What is it, Danger Geezers? Danger Gozer the Gozerian is a post-apocalyptic roguelite top-down shooter where you pave your own path. The choices you make will decide your fate. It will either turn you into the new ruler or the ashes to be windswept away. The developers did send us some keys via Curator Connect, so I gotta thank them for that. Thank mm -hmm. you for the free stuff. Yeah. Shot X Studio. Dude. Free stuff. Good uh, stuff. So 
let, let's let's get into it. How did how did this shit work under uh, Debian, man? Boom! I didn't do circles. That's kind of brilliant. Uh, check this out, man. On Debian 10.2 over here with the Threadripper 1920X, 32 gigajoules of RAM, powered by a 2060 displayed UHD. Well, here's my first thought, kids. Is if you're going to make a bullet hell that doesn't work with a controller, yeah, that's still a thing. There's one thing you better get right, and that's, you know, locking the mouse cursor to the active window, which you will discover upon launch this doesn't do. Now, Pedro will point out, there is an option, which is like uh, in the options menu, in sub-level <laughs> two of the options menu, which when enabled, uh, gave me dual hand cursors yes. that <laughs> flickered and seizured about. And after I picked myself up off the floor after a good jaunty <laughs> shake, I said, okay, so I'm not going to be able to use that because you, you have a crosshairs when you're playing the game and having two of those, you know, shit gets difficult. Um, also, you might consider making visible resolutions above 1080p available in the options menu as opposed to resolution, 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 up to 1080p, followed by optimum, which I assume is 3840 by 2160 or whatever the max res display is for your monitor. So, makes for the working, you're getting dinged a chair for not capturing my dribble input. However, for the fun, let's talk about it. Here's the thing. I'm sorry. Not sorry, but that soundtrack. Am, am I alone with this? Is atrocious. It's not. Great. Oh yeah, no. It starts to great <laughs> quickly. Um, <laughs> I, I to speak kindly of it. It is something of an unholy fusion of really bad chip tunes and jazz. So do do with that what you will. If you can power your way through it, though, um, there's a action ish like rogue like light like maybe because you do aim. You do shoot, you do get weapon upgrades, then you do die. Then you remember you have a special, then you die some more trying to use that. But right. at the end of the day, take that shot, ladies and gentlemen. The whole top-down, spinny, gun-y game thing, it's kind of been done to death, man. I don't know, man, I'm just a little worn out of it because this has been going on for a while. However, if you know that's still your gem and you like the roguelikes slash air quotes actually, you can put some Slayer on, maybe have a go with it. I mean, it's not terribly overpriced. Maybe kind of an interesting-ish concept. It didn't do anything, and it personally felt a little slow for, like, a solid action. I didn't like it. So I'm going to say one chair, because I'm just going to be honest with you. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 30, 64-bit with the i7-6700K, hyper-threading on, mitigations on, because I'm crazy. Uh, yeah, I, I I would very much like to play this game with the controller. Mother! <laughs> Mother! The controller! <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I can... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I can adapt to like the the screen not locking my cursor, but just because I can deal with it doesn't mean you get a pass on it. Um, yeah, I mean otherwise it just kind of it kind of looks like a flash game to be honest. Um, and th yeah, that, that's really all I have to say about the functionality of the game. Fun wise, honestly, it's a mediocre shoot 'em up. Get two weapons. One of them has infinite ammo. One of them don't. Run around procedurally generated levels you know, pew pew things, uh, in between the levels, you can, you have like certain sort of branching pathways where you can go to stores or gamble to get extra health or ammo or what have you. You can pick up little bits of gear to aid you and give you bouncy bullets. Did you ever get stuck with like thing. fuck upgrades for the entire run? It's like, everything's cursed. I'm like, yeah. The, the ones oh, yeah. that will kill your health. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, wait, why do I have like one hit left? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. And to you, uh, to your point, then, yeah, you have a you have an ability mapped to your right click. Fuck if I ever remember to use it. Jesus. Well, I didn't realize until I was digging around. I, I played the game for like a good twenty minutes, and it's like, oh, thanks for mentioning that at any point ever. Game. Yeah, like <laughs> this this dude that you're watching Pedro play has a shield. Mm -hmm. I completely forgot yep. about it, even though there's a bunch of times yep. I to save my bacon. But like, yeah, <laughs> you, you, it's not it's not brought up. You, don't remember it, um, but yeah, I mean it's yeah. At the, at the end of the, at the end of your little FTL map, you get a boss, you kill it, uh, you maybe get a new infinite ammo weapon, and then you move on and you rinse repeat forever and ever and ever and ever. I mean, it, it's done well enough. Uh, 
for what it is. It doesn't bring anything new to the table. And if you like this sort of game, you know, maybe you can tolerate it. But if you're like me, you'll give it two cheers. It's just kind of yeah. And over here on the uh, Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080 running on KDE Neon. Yeah, the, the, the game launch is just fine. There's, a, yeah, like Ven already mentioned, there's an option buried in the second page of the game options to lock the cursor to the window. I had no but idea it that there was very a well. second page, Pedro, until you put it yeah. in like, what? <laughs> It's not very obvious. There's like three dots there. It's like, I can understand oh, what is this? why you oh. hit it because when you click on it, it <laughs> flips the hell out. And you're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't advertise that it does that. Yeah, I guess that's one of the issues that the uh, developer mentioned on the email uh, when uh, they said us the, um, it's like, oh, yeah, we sent you keys. Like, oh, okay, cool. Um, but yeah, it, it really doesn't work very well, that particular option. Uh, the VSync option also doesn't work very well. It locks the game to 60 frames instead of actually syncing it to your monitor's V blank, which in my case is 144. Somebody so didn't that's get a to lie. the 144 round. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'd like to... Um, I'd like to imagine I'd that like you're sitting there going, it's so choppy. <laughs> uh, actually, it gets a bit jittery at points, but oh, only does, every now it. and then when but the um, the like the frame timing isn't accurate. And yeah, no, that V-Sync is just straight up a lie. Well, come on, Pedro. I mean, I expect it with my lowly 2060. I would, I, but then again, your 1080. Um, you know. <laughs> yes, uh, the extra two gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, the no, the also uh, on the graphics, the sharp filter is just a lie. I'd like an option to disable the whole retro blur scan lines thing. Mm -hmm. I'd very much like that, but they don't give you one. Um, I don't mind the mouse and keyboard for the controls because that's how I played Enter the Gungeon, and I sunk over fifty hours into that, so that's fine. For the fun, though, uh, I like these kinds of games. I mentioned Enter the Gungeon just now, and while Danger Gazers is not that good, it certainly scratches that very same itch for me. Uh, the background music, yeah, like Ben was saying, it, it, it's bad. It, it starts to grate very, very quickly. 30 seconds, Ben is like, no. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> then I came it's, back to it. I was like, maybe, maybe it got but No, it didn't. Okay. No, no, it didn't. Uh, it on you yeah, like a that, tumor. That is possibly the worst feature, and uh, followed closely by the animations, as in there are barely any. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of like the slow fire rate at first, but then I realized that that's deliberate, and they're doing that specifically to get you to realize it's like yes, the basic weapon you shouldn't be using it. You should be using the like the ammo weapons and collecting as much ammo as you possibly can. So that's fine. I get why they did it. Uh, the difficulty is very much there, and I, not once did I feel like I had a bullshit death. It was just my inability to actually cope with what was happening. All in all, I still prefer Enter the Gungeon, but this one's cheaper. So I give it three chairs. <laughs> it's cheap and available, just like Pedro. Yep. All right. Uh, you got any <laughs> last things? We'd I'm say not available, before? but I am cheap. <laughs> You listen, you're available when I say you're available. Aww. If, and, 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 any, la any last words before we get out of here? Uh, I, I, I just wasn't feeling... I'm going to say good on you lot for um, throwing this up on the Pirate Bay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. You, you can, uh, it, you that can, bought you, can you a lot of good faith. Yep. Yeah. Try before you buy. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, it's not going to change your mind about shmups. All right. Coming up next. Oh, Black Betty, Ram Jam, Blim. And it's the end. Did you miss me? No. Nope. Well, I know for a fact that no. there were a couple of people that didn't miss me. Yes. You know, outside of these two. No. Uh, but, um, uh, yeah. If you did miss me or you are completely indifferent to me and you have something that you'd like to share with us. Miss me, Go on over to uh, linuxgamecast.com and uh, hit the uh, contact button and send us some hate mail. Make sure LGC Weekly is the show that you're sending said hate mail to and uh, we will be thrilled. That's a strong word. Uh, to uh, feature your message right here, right now. You can do like Kyle did this week and uh, send us a question. Maybe you have some issue with something that we said during the show. You can do that too. Whatever 
What? None of the dark thoughts that I'm not repeating, but as you were. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. But yeah, no. Uh, anything you'd like to add to what we said or that you think we got it wrong or literally anything that you'd like to say to us, that's how you do it. Fair enough. But hey, Kyle uh, had a thing to say. It's like, oh. Oh, I'm building my first gaming PC in 12 years. Oof. I ditched Windows about eight years ago. I had a theory for improving load times and wondered if any of you guys uh, had tried it. The motherboard I'm waiting for is an X399, and I plan on loading as much RAM as possible, mounting a large chunk of RAM as a RAM drive. And make dear RAM disk mount T -T uh, TMPFS size uh, 551 uh, gigs, I guess. Um... Shadowing uh, the game files to the mounted uh, drive file and copy the contents back when closed. I've read that system memory is somewhere around 600 times faster than SSD and uh, have wondered if this would make any significant improvements in gaming. Just curious if you guys have tried something like this. I know this is a little outside of your podcast's usual content, but uh, when it comes to gaming on Linux, Linux Gamecast is the best. Ouch. See, see I that, figured... that's how you fucking landed, Kyle. You gotta butter us up right at the end when I'm like, hurry the fuck up. Oh, look, he said something nice. Okay, keep going. Yeah, I figured I'd ask while I'm waiting for my parts to arrive. So, yeah, I, it, it I, will I, speed up your load times. Absolutely. But so, some some of your load times, because I, I actually have some experience with this. Because <laughs> once upon a time when I'm like, I have 32 gigs of RAM in my system, I'm going to dick around with this. See, the thing that takes the most time when you're firing up a game for the most part is shader compile. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's going to be the thing that causes you to wait. Uh, or if you're running stuff through Proton, sometimes there's a bit of a Proton tax when it comes to loading the actual stuff. Good rule of thumb, and CPU. Good rule of thumb with Proton. It's been around a few times. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let yeah. me just um, say this. Uh, uh, allow me to tell you about our Lord and Savior, NVMe. Yes. <laughs> it, do it doesn't help with load times as much as you would think. No. Um, typically, load times, gaming performance, not really. I mean... Once you're on an SSD, that's about as good. You know, I'm going to say between an SSD load and an NVMe load, you're looking at the difference of like, eh, is that about accurate? Ma yeah, maybe yeah. about like <clears throat> a fourth of a second, and mm -hmm. if that, because if you're already running SSDs, like SAT SSDs, and you're running a good one that's got like 500 and something megabytes per second reads then your loads are already going to be pretty much up there even if you change to a pci uh fourth gen um by four or by eight um, fourth gen, nvme um, ssd yolo raid nvme and yeah <laughs> you, you might be a second faster might be yeah you might be getting a second faster on that uh, initial load time but that's about the, it. the 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 other thing too is you're going to be waiting a while for copying uh your games <laughs> to the ram disk it's and it's going to be a thing you have to do on boot you're going to have to script it it's going to be a while mm. yep. it introduces a lot of complications that are you the, the gains are going to be pretty minimal ram drives i yeah i mean as soon as we broke like that Gigabyte a second barrier within the MEs mm -hmm. is like, yeah, RAM drives just kind of lost their appeal. RAM, RAM drives are useful, say, on laptops if you can get a laptop with 32 gigs of RAM or even 16, and you can afford to spare like half of that to load a game entirely into RAM. Then, yes, or if, that you're, will, or if you're running a game server, those absolutely yeah, do help. And that will completely eliminate the uh, disk access latency and everything else. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's a strategy that a lot of Minecraft servers end up using. Uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, if you, if play around with it, send us some hate mail, mm -hmm. tell us your results. Maybe run some benchmarks. Yep. This is kind of we the beautiful thing. Love, we mean, would love to feature them. If you're going to be stacking like 32, 64 gigs of memory RAM in the first place, and you're doing that because you want to, it doesn't even cost you anything. I think what we're all saying is don't buy extra memory. In order to for try to that achieve anything, specifically, from this. no. Yeah, <laughs> buy it for bragging rights, or you want like symmetrical RAM in your Threadripper because it looked weird with just one over there. But for like real professional reasons like that, 
and uh, <laughs> yes. or, or, or just running a shit ton of VMs, just a metric. Fuck this ton is of VMs. true. Yeah, um, if you want to be running your entire server farm of a single machine, yeah, <laughs> it'll be kind of brilliant. Hey, um, scream at us next week. Let us know what you got going on. But until then, we need to cue the music. You can always find us around. 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, where we're live in our Discord for our beautiful party patrons. Doing that thing we do. Um, come say hi. Participate. It is interactive. Then we go live for the general masses at 8.30 Eastern. Punch that into Google. It'll be like, what's up, fam? If you want to get a hold of me, I'll be on Twitter. At Vinstone, I think. That's where I'm at. Or mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm just at Vin, because we got the Mastodon thing that I occasionally remember to post to. Ha! Ha! I'm Jordan Spung. I am running on exactly 64 kilobytes of RAM, and you can fill that up with garbage by sending me stuff at the Burning Fool on Twitter, or if I ever bother to check my Mastodon, I'm Frojo at mass.linuxgamecast.com. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to make him do it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but he was talking the entire time. It was kind of brilliant. <laughs> when you're in the circle you're silent Pedro learn it there shall be no silence the box Not as long as I'm circle. around anyway I'm gonna roll some credits because I'm an adult <laughs> I mean you could drop satisfying but that's otherwise accurate yeah, optimism man I have high goals for 2020 yeah <laughs> That's a disappointment well, if I ever heard one. <laughs> episode Clickle's V got brought to you by our Patreons, our executive producers like Arthur and Mr. Fox Dog Empty, Tom McCass, Mike G. Barbara, Adelius Hoplo, Mackie, Abelius, Abelabu, and Abazu. He's he's the devil. Jill and Steve. It's been a minute since we've mentioned them. Like System T, Linux Zoo, Master Dark, David S, Pablo, Gaius, Matthew. You know, uh, Grayson, Jack, um, Mini Jack. Mini Jack. Jack and Jack and Mini Jack. Gonzo, Belric, Carl, <laughs> and the, the the people on the fuck wall oh, right shit. behind Ben. God damn it! There. Ha. Can you read? <laughs> yeah, oh, can you read it? Carl, no, Mike? still 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 can't read it. Still can't make can out Basil. Mike G the and hit yeah, now, Basil. Okay, all right. get on that freak. Fix it. You and your wacky llama flavored sweater. All right. Stop <laughs> eating We're rockers, up. Frank. I, hang on. Peace. Don't wait credits. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Five dudes.